In a continuing effort to assist the mining community with the implementation of the final phase of diesel regulations, this video has been developed to provide assistance to mine operators, diesel equipment manufacturers, and vendors. As of November 25, 1999, there will be new requirements for the approval of diesel engines and other components used in underground coal mines. These will cover sections 75, 1909, 1910, and 1911 of the Code of Federal Regulations. These specific sections address out-by, non-permissible equipment in underground coal mines. The specific design or how the machine is built is at the discretion of the mine operator as long as it achieves the performance required by the regulation. What provides acceptable performance on one machine may not work on another. Also, we're not going to cover all the paragraphs of the rule. We are going to cover those requirements that have raised the most questions. I want to emphasize again that these regulations are primarily performance standards, and they're going to be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis by the local inspector. As mentioned, because of the various types and designs of vehicles being used in underground coal mines, we are going to compare two different personnel carriers, a Mac 8 and a Boss Buggy. Unlike Dodge, Ford, Isuzu, and Chevy, which meet the Department of Transportation and the Society of Automotive Engineers wiring standards, these two vehicles have been fabricated and therefore must meet the requirements of the 1968 National Electric Code. These vehicles will be required, as are all diesel-powered equipment, to have an approved engine. The approved engine will also have to have an air filter that is sized in accordance with the engine manufacturer. The air filter is required to have a service indicator set in accordance with the manufacturer. These fuel lines are original engine manufacturer, or OEM parts. What's important is to watch for leaks on all the fittings. Also, Fuel lines must be separated from electrical wiring and protected from damage in ordinary use. The orange protective sleeves covering the fuel line need to be extended to cover the fittings to prevent any spray or leakage of diesel fuel from the lines to the fuel filter or separator. As we move to the battery compartment of the Mac 8, a circuit interrupting device is installed as close as practicable between the ungrounded, usually the positive lead, of the battery and the charging generator. The battery box must be of sturdy construction and all batteries must be secured to prevent movement. The switch on this boss buggy is in the operator's compartment and needs to be moved closer to the battery. The battery terminals need proper insulation and the battery cables need adequate mechanical protection. Batteries must be protected from external damage by a hold-down strap, and proper ventilation is required. The new regulation will require each ungrounded conductor to have an insulation compatible with the impressed voltage. These connectors need to be insulated. The insulation materials must be resistant to deterioration from engine heat and oil. Ungrounded connectors do not need to be insulated if they are enclosed in a box that contains only electrical components, such as this fuse box. Where electrical components are not totally enclosed, as in this dashboard, the connectors are required to be insulated. Here we see that the electrical wiring must have adequate mechanical protection to prevent damage to the cable. But in addition to mechanical protection, wiring must be separated from sharp edges and corners where there's a possibility of damaging the wires and cables. The regulation requires a means to prevent the spray from ruptured hydraulic and lubricating oil lines from being ignited by contact with the engine exhaust system component surfaces, such as the exhaust manifold and exhaust pipe. The hydraulic lines have been covered with a flexible rubber conduit. This conduit needs to be extended to cover the fittings to provide protection if the fittings leak. Additional protections such as a ceramic coating or a jacket on the exhaust manifold or exhaust pipe or flame resistant sleeves on the hydraulic hoses should be used. Adequate guarding to protect fuel, hydraulic and electric lines when such lines fasten near rotating parts such as belts is required. 
Here, guarding must be provided to protect the hydraulic lines that go to the power steering unit where they pass near the fan belts. Reflectors or warning lights mounted on equipment, which can easily be seen in all directions, is also a new requirement. Equipment must have headlights, and these OEM headlights must be maintained. The fuel tank must be substantially constructed and protected against damage by collision, and it must have a vent opening that maintains atmospheric pressure in the fuel tank. A self-closing cap on the fuel tank must also be used. As shown here, the required manual shutoff valve is installed as close as practicable to the fuel tank. Hydraulic tanks, fillers, vents, and lines must be located to prevent spillage or leaks from contacting hot surfaces. The new rule requires a multi-purpose dry chemical type ABC fire suppression system that's listed or approved. Fire suppression must cover the engine, the starter, the transmission, and hydraulic pumps and tanks. It must also cover fuel tanks, exposed brake units, air compressors, and battery areas. Fire suppression nozzles must be protected against the entrance of foreign materials such as mud, coal dust, or rock dust. Discharge nozzles shall be positioned and aimed for maximum fire suppression effectiveness. To achieve this, it is highly recommended that a fire risk analysis be done on each vehicle to determine the optimum design and location of each system to provide necessary coverage. If you'll notice here, there's a shield which is preventing the nozzle from spraying onto the hydraulic system. Here, the fire suppression distribution tubing must be secured and protect against damage, which includes pinching, crimping, stretching, abrasion, and corrosion. It's important to remember that the dry chemical canister must be installed in a protected location or guarded to minimize physical damage from routine vehicle operations. Now this canister and pressure cylinder are protected because they are mounted in the cab. Each diesel powered machine will be required to have at least one 10A 60 BC fire extinguisher. The fire extinguisher must be located in easy reach of the operator and it must be protected from damage. Here is the automatic fire suppression system control box. It is independently powered and contains status system indicators. It must be properly maintained and a record kept. This system is set up to provide automatic engine shutdown through this valve. The valve is controlled by the fire suppression system control module and is connected to the fuel shutoff switch. The manual fire suppression system actuator is within easy access of the operator. The regulation now requires an audible warning device located near the equipment operator. Disc brakes are considered to be exposed brakes and therefore need fire suppression coverage. Service brakes must act on each wheel and must not result in a complete loss of braking capability. Notice here the cotter pin is missing and all braking capability could potentially be lost. The rear parking brakes are spring applied pressure release. And the front brakes are hydraulically controlled. As mentioned earlier, no two machine designs are identical. The design of diesel powered equipment varies. Therefore, it is necessary to evaluate each machine for overall compliance. Now, we hope this video has provided you with the guidance needed to comply with the regulations. But remember, we have not covered all the regulations, but we hope we have discussed most areas of concern. Upon request, MSHA will continue to assist with the evaluation of diesel-powered equipment. We will continue to keep you updated through MSHA's homepage at www.msha.gov.